Hello everyone, today I am doing a Bible art journal inspired by the song Honey in the Rock. I have been listening to this song and it's really been speaking to me, so I decided that I wanted to do a search on the term Honey in the Rock, and I ran across several scriptures, but the one that spoke the most to me was Deuteronomy 32 verses 10 through 13. He found him in a desolate land in a barren, howling wilderness. He surrounded him, cared for him, and protected him as the pupil of his eye. He watches over his nest like an eagle and hovers over his young. He spreads his wings, catches him, and carries him on his feathers. The Lord alone led him with no help from a foreign god. He made him ride on the heights of the land and eat the produce of the field. He nourished him with honey from the rock and oil flint from, excuse me, an oil from flinty rock. So uh, the lyrics that I wanted to use were honey from the rock. And since I'm going to do a lot of writing on this page, I opted not to gesso it because of the type of pen that I'm using. And I wanted to use the stencil by Simon Hurley as well as his ink. I personally like what the ink looks like on an ungessoed surface, and that's why I opted not to do it. So the, the verse, the lyrics that I chose for this particular um, uh, Bible art are from a song, and I did not do all of the song in my Bible because since it is verses from a song, it's, it's, you know, you have the chorus that does several times. So I, it, I didn't need to write that down like three times, right? Uh, I also wanted to write down the portions of it that meant the most to me. Now, I don't have the best handwriting, so I opted to use a ruler and just help write out, like trace out some lines for this. And you're going to notice that they're kind of crooked when I do it, but once I get the scripture written down, I really like how it ends up. This is a layering stencil, and I use three different colors. I have everything I'm used down below, listed down below. Um, and I just didn't really care if it was perfect, and you'll see why, because as I go on through the art journal, it does blend in nicely. One of the things that has helped me with my Bible art journaling is realizing that it's my time of worshiping God, and I'm not looking for perfection, so to speak. I'm, I'm more interested in the experience and the journey that I'm having with God, so I don't get too hung up if not everything is perfect. With that being said, since I've taken the attitude, very rarely do I not end up with an art journal page that I really enjoy. And this particular page was laid on my heart for a while now, but I have been kind of shying away from it because it's not necessarily my style. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the honeybee phase. And so um, it was kind of kind of interesting when I decided to go ahead and do this. I ended up really liking this page, but it's good to get out of your norm. Sometimes that helps spark your creativity and God speaks to you in ways that may not have been able to happen um, without it because his ways are not our own. So um, yeah, that's, that's kind of the history behind this page. For these flowers, it's really pleasing to the eye when things go off the page. So I like to cut them in, in half and I'll use one portion of it on one side of the Bible and one portion on the other. Something else that I wanted to mention was this is my Bible art. Like, I don't take this one to church with me. This isn't necessarily a Bible that I study out of because sometimes I end up covering up the um, verses with gesso or paint. Some people don't want to do that and they take issue with it. I totally respect that. One way that you can Bible art journal if you don't have a Bible 
that is exclusively for Bible art journaling or if you just really don't want to ever write in a Bible is to just take a verse, write it down and do an art journal page on it. Um, that would totally work as well. In fact, I'm going to be doing art journaling. I'm a big quote and verse type person. So you're going to probably be seeing that soon too. So there's definitely ways to Bible art journal without creating art in your journal, so to speak. But this is the Illustrated Bible and it's created for art journaling. I don't have an issue with it. The pages on it are thicker, margins are wider. Obviously you can see here how wide the margins are. And I really enjoy it for this. I love the spiral bound. It makes it easy to create in. I'm actually gonna add quite a bit of bulk on this. You'll see at the end that um, won't hinder my future artwork in here. All right, I did do that in pencil because I wanna erase those lines. And now I'm just gonna go in and write down the lyrics that spoke to me. And the lyrics were, there is honey in the rock, water in the stone, no matter where I go, I don't need to worry now that I know you've got it. Praying for a miracle, thirsting for the living well, only you can satisfy. Freedom where the spirit is, bounty in the wilderness, purpose in your plan, power in the blood, healing in your hands. I keep looking, I keep finding, you keep giving, keep providing. I have all that I need, you are all that I need. How sweet it is to trust in you, Jesus. So those are the, the um, most meaningful words that I found from that verse. And also, as I did this, I only listened to that song. I really let it sink in as I was doing this Bible art journal. One of the things that I do all the time when I'm creating is in, in my Bible is I only listen to praise and worship or gospel. I cannot do this without my music on. I know that that may sound weird, but I haven't had the opportunity or the desire or calling to do my Bible art in complete silence. Um, God really speaks to me through music. So definitely be sensitive to how you create and what makes you um, really connect with the Holy Spirit. And so um, pray about it because what works for me may not work for you, right? All right. And um, I went over, I went around, I um, did the Bible verses or the, the lyrics first, and then I went back over, used my very favorite thing, which is the ultra heavy, like the heavy thick gel by Dina Wakely. That stuff is amazing. It dries clear. I did do it after I was done with my writing and my ink was dry simply because I didn't want to smear anything and I didn't want to wait for it to dry to do my journaling on it. So I, I waited until the end and I didn't cover the whole thing in it. I, I tried to leave that space where I wrote clear. Now I'm just going through and adding a little bit of sparkle with my stickles. This is just a really fun way to add some extra pizzazz to your artwork. And if you'll see up on the side there, um, those are by Queen & Co. The flowers and the little drop, the little yellow, um, they look like little dew drops. And I thought that they would match perfect in here. First time ever adding any kind of bulk like that, but look how cute it is when it's done. Now, once I'm done with this, I go ahead and I lay out all of those little cute yellow um, droplets. I don't know what they're called. Tell me down below. And then I, I, it's missing something. So um, black and white really help ground your artwork. So I decided to go in with black liquid pearls and do little teeny tiny dabs all over. And I just feel like it really helped pull the whole thing together. All right, you guys, I certainly hope that you are enjoying this process video and it's inspiring you. I'm in love with his palette, which is where I got this digital art from. Go check him out. There is a 10% code for you down below that she gave me to share. 
And if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Until next time, I'm Bud Golden. Happy crafting.